Hello friends, I wanted to just give you a few tips and tricks uh, that I've learned on making these beautiful translucent flowers. Uh, I see a lot of you trying it and that's wonderful. Uh, and I just thought I'd pass on a few things that I've learned in, in doing these um, over the last year. I've really only started watercolor about a year ago, but um, I've done a lot of uh, tutorials and have really enjoyed it. So the first tip is that I don't actually use expensive paper. I use this Canson watercolor paper, which is not cotton. It's just, uh, but it is good for watercolor still. Um, so the higher end papers like the Arches, that's the other paper that I use, um, I don't find that this technique works quite as well because you are removing a lot of the paint and that cotton really just does absorb it a lot. So my own preference, my own experience has been that this smoother kind of watercolor paper works very well. Um, the second thing is to make the watercolor very, very watery. So I'm going to show you here. I have a Winsor Newton watercolor palette. And I've made myself a little bit of a green for the stem, which is just using a uh, sap green. I've made myself a little chart of all of my colors. It may not be readable, but it is to me. So I've used this sap green, in, uh, which is a very nice light green. And I'm going to use this, um, which one am I using? Intense blue over here. And I'm going to make it very watery. So I'm gonna take some on a big brush, and I do use a big brush for this because you're putting a lot of water down and you're also taking a lot up. So this is pretty saturated, um, and we wanna really water that down. And I tend to not use uh, a combined color for this. I just use, I just pick one of the colors. That way I can always make more very quickly by just adding water to some of the pigment. I don't have to mix anything. So you can see how watery that is, and I just keep adding water more water the better um, and then that will give us a very translucent effect okay and I can make more if I need to okay so we've got our supplies and I'm using a Princeton uh, 12 uh, I think it's called a snap brush it's oh sorry wasn't in frame um, and that's what I'm using for the majority of this and then for the stem I might use one of the smaller snap brushes like maybe a six um, or well, this is a zero, that might be too small, maybe a six. Okay, the next tip that I would give all of you is to make the petals um, irregular looking. So it doesn't have to be that classic shape of a petal that we, we normally see, but making it very irregular. So I don't usually sketch out petals. I usually just freeform it and that works really well. And the nice thing about these flowers is you can always add a petal. You can always balance your composition by adding a petal here or there. But I did just for this one, just to give myself a little bit of a guide. So we're gonna start with one petal here. I'm gonna do this one down here. And I just do the outline of my petal. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So we're going to add the pigment. I'm going to add more color everywhere, and it's okay that it's pooling. And you can see that the shape of my petal is not a classic shape. It's like a weird irregular shape, and that works quite well. And then the trick here is to add more water. I know that sounds strange, but you're actually going to add a little bit more water to it, and you're going to try to get that water to the edge because it gives that edge a bit of a saturation when we do this. So I add more water, I push it to the edge wherever I can. And now we're going to lift it up. So I'm going to have a paper towel close by and I'm going to sweep across my petal and take up the majority of that paint. You can even touch the paper a little bit, not to smudge it, but it just sort of absorbs some of it and you're gonna take up as much as you can so that it ends up quite translucent. And as close to the edge as you can get it. So there we've got one petal. And in fact, 
I would suggest not to do the pencil, to be honest, because you might end up seeing the pencil in the end result, which I feel like I might see here, but that's okay, we're gonna keep going. So there's one petal. Now, the next thing we need to keep in mind is that before we add any more petals overlapping this one, this one needs to completely dry. So the good thing about doing a big flower like this is you can do another petal that is not touching this one while this one is drying. I have a little, couple of drops there. So we're gonna let this one completely dry. I feel like I wanna just do this edge a little bit. Okay, that's fine. And we'll do, we'll tackle a petal independent over here um, and let that one dry. And we're gonna do maybe four petals that don't touch each other before we do anything that overlaps. Okay, so let's go over here and we're gonna follow this irregular petal. So something like this. We're gonna fill it in. So this one is not really much of a blending technique. You know, there's some techniques in watercolor that has a lot of blending. This one, you're just applying the color, you're applying the water to get you to that edge, to get the edges really nice. And then you're taking it all off, or as much of it off as you can. So it's a very relaxing technique. But it does require patience, because as I said, you cannot put another piece on top until this one is completely dry. And so I have used hair dryers to just speed up the process before. There is another petal, and you see how irregular that one is too. Not your classic petal shape. But that's what makes it look very organic and pretty. Okay, we can tackle one up here. Let's do that. Following this kind of irregular shape. I originally did these flowers using I think it's Jay Lee has some great tutorials and I think I, some of you have tried them. It does show you with the more kind of regular petal shape rather than the irregular, but you can take that same technique and apply it to any kind of flower. So I'm adding a little bit of water to get those edges. And then, oh, I think I spilled some water there. We're gonna take it off. So you want a brush that can really lift water. That's why I'm using such a big brush. This isn't a precise technique. Kind of a heavy handed, big, big brush technique, which is nice. And you can't really make a mistake. If your shape is a little wonky, that's perfect. It'll look that much more natural. And you can decide how much you want to take off. If you want to leave, this is a, a pretty effect here at the edge. I could leave that, or we can take some more of it away. It depends how translucent you really want it. You can also make the color even more watery, and that would also make it more translucent. Depends your, on your preference, and play around with it. Okay, so we have three petals. I think I can do one more now before I try to do any overlap. So let's do one over here, like this. And you'll see if you do overlap it while it's still wet, you just don't get the definition of the petal, which is why you need to kind of wait. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water. The first time I did this, and when you get to this stage here, it doesn't look very nice yet. It's, it looks like four weird petals. You're not sure if it's gonna work out. Just stick with it. With watercolor, there is that People have mentioned this before. There's an ugly stage in the middle of the painting where you're not sure if it's gonna go one way or the other. And I say just keep painting. In the end, you might really like the final, the final piece. But you have to get through that um, doubt and through that kind of 
more ugly stage before you get to something that you really like. I've had pieces where I don't like the end result and I add a gold pen. So this is the gold pen that I use. It's a Sakura Jelly Roll pen. And I find that makes all the difference. So I sometimes will have a piece that I don't like and months later I'll come back and I'll either put gold pen on it or I might put some black pen. This is a Sakura Micron pen just to give it some edges and I suddenly love it. So don't give up on a piece. <laughs> all right, let's check that first one that we did. It actually is still a little bit wet, so I wouldn't want to put something on it quite yet. It's almost there. Let's see if we can help dry it a little bit more. You go through a lot of paper towel in uh, this kind of a project as well, so have some standing by. <laughs> I have a few pieces. Okay, let's see. I think we're just about there. I highly recommend, it would be kind of loud if I brought my uh, hair dryer here, so I didn't do it, but that's how I've done these pieces in the past, so. Okay. Let's attempt, let me see, which one should we do? Guess we can do the petal that's over here. All right, let me try. Hopefully it won't blend. Um, I'm trying to avoid just this middle part here, which I'm gonna end up doing as a little stem. So this little petal comes in front and goes like this and goes around. Okay, let's see. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And we're gonna fill in the petal with our color. And now we're gonna add some of that water. Getting it to the edges. Okay, and now we're gonna lift up that. Oh, I think I missed a couple spots. Okay, now we're gonna lift that up. Being very careful near the edges because you do want that definition. So just get as close to, but not going over. So take your time at the edges. You can see my paper's already warping a little bit. That's okay. If you ever um, frame these, the frame makes it somewhat straight, so the glass, you know. And I have framed a couple of these and I really enjoy them in my hallway. Okay, there we go. Got our first overlapping petal. I'm not going to spend too much time on the overlap. I don't want to overwork the paper because it does get a bit wet. One thing I'm not happy with is that I can see my uh, my pencil marks. I usually don't do pencil, so I recommend don't do pencils. Maybe just take a look at if I, I'd be happy if you tried this exact one. So just take a look, see generally where the petals are. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but you can see these kind of organic shaped pencils. Petals. Okay, so we need to make a little bit more of the paint because I'm running out here. So all I'm going to do is add some more of my blue on my paintbrush and I'm going to add lots of water. Now you start with the petals, the bigger ones first, and you kind of do the smaller ones overlapping. Okay, maybe a little bit more, it seems a little bit. All right, so you can see it's very, very, very watery. Okay, we'll move it to the side. Come back here. Let's see. It's still a bit wet. This one's actually drier. Oh no, because I just did this one. That's what, that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna do this petal over here. Let's do, or maybe we can do this big one. Yeah, let's do the big one. It's still slightly wet.
Okay, I'm going to do this one because this is more dry. So we're just going to do starting here, going over here. And as I said, at the end, you can always add more petals. And I've done that before where I'm like, well, it's not quite balanced. There's something I'd like it to look different. So add another petal. You'll be surprised. You might suddenly love it. <laughs> and don't compare yourselves to others. Paint for the enjoyment of the payment, pay, painting. If in the end you're very happy with it, wonderful, you can share with others, but it's the process that was important. For example, I love the way this blue paint is on the paper. It's just so pretty. It's very relaxing to see it move around. Okay, and I'm going to try to get to those edges. I may try one another one where I leave a little bit more paint at the edges because I do like that effect. That's very pretty. But just for this one for consistency well. Okay, so we now have two overlapping petals. We're gonna let that dry. No, I don't want to do that too much. It does give it a texture, actually, so I won't do that. Okay. All right, but you can see how you can see the overlapping edges here, and, and it looks quite nice. And it's defined nicely because of that water. Okay, so let's see what else we can do on this side, maybe. I think this one here overlapping these two. So I'll take my paint. And I don't even see the pencil here, so... That's good, I can just put it wherever I want. <laughs> I think it goes something like this. And, and you can see how organic that shape is. Just with the edges of the brush, with the edge of the brush, just push it around. Some can be more rounded, some can be more pointy. The variety is what makes it nice. Let's add a little bit of water. And now we take it off. I know this part feels like you're wasting paint. <laughs> but remember, it was very watery, so we didn't use a lot of color to begin with. We made it extremely watery. So, But I find that adding that water helps define that edges a little bit better. You can play around with it. Try one petal without adding the extra water and one with, and see if it makes a difference for you. If it doesn't, then you don't have to do it. But okay, I like the way that's coming. All right, so we've got that petal. Let's see if we can do up here. Yep, I think we can do this big one up here. Okay, so we're gonna do this one here. Nice big one. And big petals are lovely, nice and bold. Cover a big area, they look very dramatic. Now we're going to add our water, take it to the edge. This one I already have at the edge. All right. Uh, see, I need a new paper towel. Okay. And we're going to take that color off. bought a special camera arm and this is my first video with it so <laughs> I hope I hope it's good okay 
Now I can see the paper it wasn't completely dry. I'm going to just be very careful here and not drag it and more kind of dab it. Okay. Don't overwork it because the paper underneath can start to pile a little bit. It kind of gets a little bit funny looking. Okay. Starting to shape up. I really I'm liking the shape of the piece. Um, I have one more big petal here, but I'm worried that this is still wet. Let's see. I'm touching it with my hand just to see. So this one is definitely dry because we did a long time ago. This one is a little bit wet. Um, so normally I would take my time and let that completely dry. Um, but I don't want you guys to have to wait around. So let's see. Maybe I can do one. This is more dry. I'm going to do the petal over here instead and wait for this one to dry a little bit more. Let's do here. We're going to bring this out. It's almost like a square edge to it. Like that. Now you can change up so it's not exactly the same color. I've done that as well. For the smaller petals on the inside you can change up the color just a little bit and that has a nice effect too. So one of my purple translucent flowers, I kind of changed up the purple a little bit on the inside. Oh, I'm getting some splatters. You can just, if you can see those splatters right away and just dab them with some paper towel. Let's see, I got some splatters. Is done. Let's see how we are over here. Yeah, that's better. It's better. Okay, so I'm going to do this petal up here, and then once we do that petal, we kind of have all of our base petals done, and then we can do a few smaller ones that go on the inside. But for that, I might pause the video and completely dry it, and then maybe show you the rest in time lapse. Let's see. Because it's the same technique, as I said, it's just patience. Once you get the outline that you like, this part's easy. Just fill it. Like a coloring book almost where you define the shapes and just color it in and then add your water just to get to those edges okay nice big petal I like this one and now we're going to take it as much as we can away Oh boy, I'm splattering all over the place. Okay, I have to do that a little bit more carefully. When you take the paint off, don't splatter everywhere. Sometimes it seems like it takes a while to take that paint off, but just take your time. I got a little bit of a weird effect here. 
But you know what? It doesn't matter because I'm going to put a petal on top of it. So, okay. I think we're good with that. I think my color's a little bit more saturated now, so. I'm not sure if that's good. Okay. All right, so I'm going to pause the video, get this to dry completely, and then show you the rest of this in uh, faster speed because it's more of the same technique, okay? And I do hope you all try it, and I hope you uh, show me some of your work. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I added a few more petals. Uh, I didn't show all the time lapse for it because there was a lot of drying time, so I had to pause constantly. But as you can see, I added a few more of these smaller petals so they don't go quite to the edge that we had defined originally. And overlapping where I could, I even covered up that little patch that I wasn't happy with before, and I don't think it's as noticeable now. And now I just want to finish it off with the middle uh, stem, uh, the stem and this middle area, I'm not sure what you call it. So again, I'm going to make it very translucent. So it's that sap green I mentioned. And I'm just going to get this green into this middle area that I kind of left white on purpose. And I can overlap a little bit as long as it doesn't look messy. Okay. And I'm going to add just a little bit more color just to saturate it a little bit. And again, I'm going to wipe it off. We can always add more if we think it looks too light afterwards. Do that. Okay. And I think I'm going to just make this a little bit more like the shape of this middle area so it's a little bit bigger up there. In fact, I do think we might end up putting more color. It might make it stand out a little bit better. So let me see what happens if I add a little bit more color to this middle area. Okay, take some of that away. Yep, I think I like that. And then I'm also going to do the stem, which is coming off the bottom here. And actually, we're going to make it go through because if we're pretending that this is like an x-ray, you would see it all the way through. What we'll do is we'll do the line. I'm trying to do a steady hand here. And then we'll see if we can take some of it away. I'm just dragging the brush and wiping it. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. And there's usually these little dots. I don't know how to look. Let's see. Is it dry? Just put a few of these dots, the kind of lines coming down. Hopefully, looks okay. Again, do this only when it's dry, otherwise, your dots will blend. Okay, I don't think we want to overdo it. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed uh, 
my little video to try to give you some tips and tricks on what's worked for me. And I can't wait to see what all of you share with the rest of the group. Thank you so much.